Welcome to Reddit Aliens. What are your scariest paranormal encounters while at work? Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. I worked as a burial ground custodian grave digger for a year in my hometown in Ontario. I was asked to clean the main mausoleum from top to bottom. My boss gave me the keys the day before and said I could come earlier to get a head start before the cemetery was open to the public. 5 a.m. rolls around and I get to the mausoleum. It's the largest building on the grounds with giant windows on all sides. My daily tasks included dusting from ceiling to ground, wiping down urn display cases carefully, cleaning ornaments, wreaths, and other general custodial duties. I locked the main entrance and began to clean. While vacuuming a side hallway, I kept on hearing a distinct humming sound. I disregarded it at first and assumed it was the furnace. About a minute later though, the melodic humming began to get louder to the point that I thought maybe the radio was on. I shut the vacuum off completely and the room was dead silent. Strange. I turned my phone on silent just in case. A few minutes later, as I was cleaning out a display case to wipe it down, I was reaching for an urn and I heard someone loudly whisper my name right behind me. I was so startled I almost dropped the urn as only my mother calls me by my full first name and usually when she's scolding me. Being completely freaked out, I stopped what I was doing and exited the side entrance to smoke a joint to calm my nerves. That'll help. I had a lot of work to do still. I walked about 20 feet away from the building when I noticed a short lady standing near the main entrance of the building inside. She looked as if she was paying her respects to someone in particular. She was facing away from me. How the F did she get inside, I thought. She would have had to sneak through the side entrance while I was out smoking, but it was in plain sight the whole time. The cemetery gates were still locked, too. Thinking someone was potentially trespassing, I run back into the building through the side entrance. There was nobody in or around the building. Security footage showed nothing suspicious. Before I got back to working, I checked the funerary recess crypt to see who she could have been visiting. It was where my old Italian babysitter is kept. She passed away when I was about four or five and I never went to her burial because I had an anxiety attack during the memorial service. I didn't even know she was in the mausoleum. I spent about 70% of my childhood at her house and she always liked to hum while she cooked and gardened. Other than my mother, she was the only person that addressed me by my full name. She was around five foot one too. Hmm. I was working with my research team late one night when we realized that we needed to go grab something from our lab a couple of buildings over. I drew the short straw, so I headed over to our lab at around 1 a.m. Now, I go to Virginia Tech, and our lab happens to be located on the exact floor of the building that the infamous shooting took place in. You know, the floor where 31 people were murdered in cold blood, the 32nd victim was shot on the residential side of campus. I tried not to think about this as I went into the lab to get our missing equipment. I had eerie vibes the whole time, but I wasn't completely spooked until the door to the lab closed unexpectedly. I tried to turn the handle, but it wouldn't budge. As soon as I realized I was trapped and had that oh shit moment, the lights cut out. Frantically, I called the rest of my team for help on my phone. When I hung up, I felt a finger touch my lips in the shh hand gesture. I've never been more scared in my life. It felt like I was reliving someone hiding from the shooter in our small lab space. My team arrived a couple of minutes later and the door opened without issue. I must have looked insane to them because everything stopped a few moments before they entered the building. I made them live text me the entire time. I never went into Norris alone again and never after 10 p.m. I wonder which one of the victims was trying to keep me safe that night. Not my story, but my dad's friend. He used to be a sheriff for San Bernardino County back in the late 50s and early 60s, and one night he gets a call that there are some kids in an old abandoned house messing around and turning the lights on and making a racket. So he and his partner go out to the house and sure enough, there are lights on in the house. So he and his partner go inside and search the whole house and the perimeter and find nobody. So they go back inside, turn off the lights and head back to their car. They get in the car and look up at the house and a light turns back on upstairs. So they go in the house again and can't find anyone. So they turn off the lights, go back to their car and then the same lights turn on again and they see a shadow of a person pass by the window. So now they're pissed and run back into the house guns drawn yelling they're the police and still can't find anyone. 
So they go back out to the car and radio to dispatch to call the utility company and have them cut power to the house. After a few minutes of waiting, the dispatcher radios them and says that the utility company cut power to the house a few years ago, after the couple who lived there died. At that point, both of the officers got a chill and just hopped back in their car and left. Unexplained event happened when I worked in Gettysburg at an antique shop. Been working there for two summers and the owners were closing up shop to move to a different location. The building had rumors of being haunted by the usual Civil War ghosts that draw in tourists. One day, I go up to help pack things and move them to a new location when one of the owners tells me to get something from the basement. I never liked going down there because it was always dark, dank, and had exposed foundation walls. To make matters worse, it was stuffed with old stuff and a wicker crate that was supposedly a viewing coffin for Victorian-era children. Anyway, as I was walking over to the basement stairs, I heard two thumps on what I thought was the bottom step. I looked down the stairway, mildly freaked out, and started to grab the handrail to begin my descent. Just then, I heard what sounded like someone running, almost charging up the stairs at me. I got so freaked out that I jumped back and ran to the front of the store where the owner was and told him what had happened. He just looked at me with a kind of smirk and said, oh yeah, that happens sometimes. They didn't tell you about the basement when you started? Gettysburg is interesting and eerie at the same time. Have you ever been to a famous battleground? Ever felt anything weird? About 20 years ago, I worked third shift in a psych hospital. There were two floors, one housing all of the administrative offices, medical records, the gym, cafeteria, pharmacy, etc. The second floor housed all of the patients and clinical staff, except for me. I was alone on the first floor in our intake office. Anyone could walk in at any time and request an assessment for treatment. I only remember being genuinely frightened by a living person once, but that wasn't the only time I was afraid there. One night, I needed to go upstairs for something. I was standing in front of the elevator with my back to a long hall that stretched over half the length of the building. I suddenly felt as though something was rushing towards me up the hallway at top speed. There were no noise and I felt like I should not turn around. The elevator door opened. I got in and felt for the button. Whatever it was, it didn't make it into the elevator. When the elevator got to the second floor, I was still so terrified I couldn't turn around or move, and I felt myself tearing up and starting to hyperventilate. The elevator opened right across from the nurse's station, and someone said, what's wrong? What happened? And I really started to cry. I felt someone enter the elevator and gently guide me out to a chair in the nurse's station. Two of my favorites, Janice and Anne, were there. I tried to brush it off at first, and Janice said kind of sharply, I just talked to you downstairs and you were fine. Did you see something down there? Not did someone get in or break in, but did I see something? I told them I hadn't seen anything, but I sure shit felt something and explained what happened. I've goosebumps so bad right now and I'm almost tearing up to them both. I saw them exchange a glance and Janice called over to the other unit for their psych tech Phil to come over. As an aside, this hospital was chronically understaffed at night and we had to help each other out a lot, so it was pretty tight shift which is why I was willing to open up to the three of them. Phil seemed angered by my story and said, it's not right. It's not safe for people to be alone down there all night. I was left with the impression that he either didn't believe me or he thought someone had gotten in through our unbelievably shitty security. I don't remember what else happened then, but at some point I went back downstairs and I think Phil hung out with me for the rest of the night. I don't remember us dwelling on it because I sure as shit couldn't afford to quit. I was to find out later that Phil and Janice had both seen an apparition clearly enough to believe someone had gotten into the locked adolescent unit, and many people had had negative experiences there. The hospital ended up closing eventually and got broken up into a same-day surgery and some doctor's offices. No way in hell would I go back there. I've got one. This happened during the day shift at a nursing home I used to work at. One of my patients had her call light on and was also yelling for the nurse. That would be me. I went into her room to find out what was going on, as this patient was usually pretty quiet. Before I entered, it sounded like something was banging around in the room. I want to add that all of the patients or residents on this particular room had their faculties about them. 
maybe some short-term memory issues, but none of them were ever totally out of it. The resident that put her call light on and in her roommate both tell me that someone is locked in their bathroom, that they heard yelling and banging like someone was trying to get out. My first thought was that another resident had wandered into their room and somehow got stuck in the bathroom since they did not share the bathroom with anyone else. When I opened the door, there was nobody there, completely empty. I'd have brushed it off, however, before I entered the room, I heard it too. I work in a children's emergency room and have seen or heard my fair share of things. A couple of years ago, I was working third shift, 7 p.m. to 7 a.m., and it had been an unfortunate evening. We had lost a child, a regular patient of the ED earlier in my shift, and, well, that is something that stays with you. Usually around 3 a.m., we're able to start closing down hallways due to the lower volumes of patients, and I decided to take a much-needed break, away from the noise in one of the closed hallways. I was hiding away in the unit secretary area of the hallway when I heard a child's laugh and footsteps running down the hallway into a room. Again, this isn't a particularly unusual thing, but I wanted to investigate because there shouldn't be a child running around unattended in the closed area of the ED. I walk in the room where I heard the child and it was completely empty. Lights were still off. Behind me, I hear the same thing, but in another room, but this time the light switched on. Again, I go and investigate, and it was empty. Confused, I turned the light off and went back to the desk. I sit there for a few minutes, and I see the light switch back on in one of the rooms, and shortly after I hear the same laugh. I get up and start walking to the room, and as I get closer, the child's laugh again, and the light switches off right before I get there. At this point, I can hear my heart pounding through my chest, like I know something isn't right. I walk into the room and turn the light on, and my heart drops. Sitting on the bed is the patient I had come to know very well throughout the years. It was the patient that I watched pass away several hours ago in our trauma room. I immediately started tearing up, and I remember wanting to say something, but the words wouldn't come out. He looked at me, laughed, and just like that, he was gone. Maybe I was sleep deprived and seeing things, but in that moment, I felt a sense of peace, and it is an experience that I will never forget. Whether it was exhaustion or the supernatural, Thank you for what you do. Seriously. I'm a concrete finisher worker. A few years back, we were doing a 250 by 150 yard pour for a repair station for truck transports. This is in southern Idaho. It had to be done at night and early morning hours due to the business still operating. We had to work around them. Anyways, on this night, it was about 2 a.m. We had just finished pouring and we were floating the slab and finishing edges before we put the power trowel on. The concrete has to set for a little bit, so we take a quick lunch. When we all got back, we noticed something very strange. Tiny footprints of a child made a path right through our slab, started on the south end forms, ran right up the center, and stopped. We weren't too upset. Stepping in wet concrete does set us back, but only by a few minutes. Anyways, we were a little concerned as raw skin contact with concrete can be harmful, especially to a child, so we investigate. The owner, nor any employees, were around the area, just us concrete guys. Mind you, this is out in the boonies at 2 a.m. It never made sense to us, and due to our job, we couldn't invest too much through in it uh, to most of the crew didn't put much into it really. Just the usual sigh and grunt that we had to float the slab again. But yeah, that was weird and stuff. So yep, my experience at work. I used to work at this hotel. On the top floor, the 21st, we had a lounge where we would serve drinks and appetizers for the VIP guests. One day, the front desk manager and the assistant general manager were inspecting rooms on the 21st floor after the lounge was closed until evening time. They were walking in the direction of the lounge when they saw a blonde woman in a blue dress open the lounge door and go inside. The two managers tried addressing her and telling her that it was closed but the lady ignored them and just went inside. My managers then went to go inside the lounge but found it was locked and had to use their master key to open it. When they got inside, they only saw the lounge employee cleaning up and they asked her where the lady went. The employee said, what lady? No one is here but me. After that happened, the two managers came down to the front desk and told us all about what happened. It was pretty crazy. Still can't really explain this. Not even death could stop this fancy lady from being first to happy hour. 
I guess this wasn't on the job, but this happened some time ago in Polo Park Mall in Winnipeg, Canada. I was living in Manitoba at the time, helping my uncle in his restaurant. It was a small restaurant, so it was family run, and since I had always wanted to try my hand at cooking, they needed one more person for the summer, so I was like, I'll do it. Anyway, me and my cousin went to Winnipeg one day while I was out there. They had an appointment at the Polo Park Dental Center. While they were at the dental center, I decided to just walk around the mall to kill some time. I ended up going into the restroom. Now, this is where it got super weird. The restroom was small, so it only had one stall and one or two urinals. If I remember correctly, it's been a while since I've been back. I was in the stall. Now, someone came in and tried opening the stall I was in, but it obviously being occupied, they stood there waiting. But... During the time he's waiting, he starts talking to someone, like loud and clear. I can distinctly hear them talking, two people just chatting away. I didn't pay much attention. It was a little odd to have such a loud and intense conversation in the restroom, but oh well, each his own. So, when I left the stall, to my shock as I opened the door, the conversation stopped. And get this, there was only one person there, a wide-eyed older gentleman wearing this old suit and his hair in about every direction except down. So I went to the sink to wash my hands, slightly disturbed, but I assumed the second person had just left the restroom very quickly. But then the elderly man went in and closed the door, and guess what? Immediately the conversation continued. Once again, two distinct voices were talking, having a full-blown conversation. I didn't stick around, left the restroom very quickly. I've never encountered something quite like that before. I had had other encounters, but this, this was different. 